What is going on my beautiful people of the world? Today is a day for storytelling. Not going to be trying to make a point about anything. I'm not going to be trying to sustain an argument regarding something that has irked me in some fashion. I'm just here to talk, literally. I'm going to talk through some things. So the first thing, life. Life in general, it's a hard thing to manage, right? You got to make a decision about where you want your life to lead and you got to stick to that and you got to pray that you make the correct decision and that it can handle the life that you desire. It's a hard decision to make to make a commitment to a specific career path. And so I decided, you know, I made the wrong choice. Computer science, unreliable. It's not really a growing market. There's really nothing there for me. And so I decided I needed to pick something, a field, a choice, a path that held more positivity toward my future. And I think I've come to a conclusion based on a variety of factors that I will get into after I detail at great length where I want my life to lead. I'm going to win the lottery. You heard it here first. Now, first stumbling point. Never bought a lottery ticket in my life, never intend to. But I figure that's a minor inconvenience in this grand plan of mine. I think it's still going to be okay. Um, and so here's why. I don't have enough time to do things. Hobbies, I'm falling behind with them. Books, TV shows, movies, video games, entertainment in general. I can no longer just enjoy everything that I want to. And so I figure... What better way to do it than to just win the lottery and not have to work again? You just throw a bunch of that into you know a, ch a chunk of very solid investments, keep the rest in a savings account that just builds up interest over time. You're set for life. I'm not going to be buying any luxury cars or anything because they don't make those big enough to handle a six foot five person to begin with. So I'm good. I'm not going to be buying anything overly expensive. I just need a nice computer a good internet connection and I figure the interest will handle any video games that I will desire to play in the future so it's a perfect plan there's no downsides to this whatsoever here's why this decision came about <laughs> and the, well, let me just before I get into that I hate myself for getting into JRPGs and I would say on a consistent basis JRPGs are probably my favorite genre of game in general like there's a whole lot of faults to them but for me personally, generally the good aspects outweigh the bad ones. And so, I mean, one of the worst parts about JRPGs is they do they have very little evolution. So in general, like, for instance, series. Right now I'm playing Dragon Quest VII, and I'm going to get into it a little bit in a little bit more detail later. But, like, the Dragon Quest series has really not gone anywhere from a base level forever, really. Like, I mean, there's been some little minor improvements here and there. But overall, if you've played one of them you're not gonna get into a new one and be like well what the hell is going on here this is all new it's not it absolutely not um so there's not a lot of kind of innovation and interesting new developments when you get into JRPGs and that's perfectly fine because if you enjoy the concept if you enjoy the foundation then you know you're solid from the get-go but the problem being they are on average like the longest lasting games that you can play Obviously, anything that has a competitive multiplayer mode that you can get into and just lose hours upon hours in can definitely go uh, further. But in terms of just a single player experience, there are really very few games that can hope to match the length of a JRPG. And so because of how much I enjoy them, that is a whole lot of hours needed to actually play through the ones I want to play. And so I just mentioned Dragon Quest. So over the past two weeks, I have gotten the following games or will be getting the following games from a variety of venues. Sheer and the Wanderer, which is a roguelike game. I already kind of dismissed that. I wasn't really a fan of the gameplay, but that could have run me for a very long time because roguelikes in general are another genre where it's just like... There's so much to see, so much to do. It's very easy to lose hours upon hours because nearly every single run that you... So if you are not familiar with the roguelike genre, very simplistic uh, concept at least. Maybe not in execution, but a simplistic concept. You start out with a base character, just default all across the board. You go into a dungeon. Usually that dungeon is randomized in some fashion. And you just get equipment skills whatever as you move along and it, like I said in general those are randomized so you get a new run basically every single time and when you die that's it 
your character, all the progress you've made gets wiped, you start with a blank slate. Now, a lot of people are kind of just like, well, then what's the point? Like, you can't make any definitive progress, but the point is just enjoying each and every run as it comes along. You learn, you build up, you get further with each run, you get different skills that you get to play with. So even though it kind of feels like, well, all the work that I just did for the past hour, 30 minutes, however long it took you to die in that run, feels like it was wiped away, you still have that experience that's going to aid you further on. So that's what Sheer in the Wander is. It's kind of a roguelike. I'm not positive on that. I didn't delve into it deeply enough. I wasn't a fan of the action aspect, and obviously that's a huge uh, part of that game genre. So if you don't enjoy the basic gameplay, you're not going to enjoy the game. Uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which is the one that I probably should be playing because it's the one that's going to be over the fastest. A game called MayQ Labyrinth of Death or something like that. I made a mistake purchasing that game. <laughs> I basically heard um, somebody talking about it, and their basic synopsis of it was, it's Etrian Odyssey with mech battles, with customizable mechs that battle. And I was just like, say no more. I don't need to hear another damn word. I'm getting it. That's amazing. Um, and so I grabbed it, and I'm not a fan of it. Because <laughs> the thing is, so if you are not familiar with the Etrian Odyssey series, it's a dungeon crawler. Now, in a dungeon crawler, there are two main aspects that make the game and determine whether or not it is worth playing. The gameplay, obviously, I mean, that's the same thing with every game in general. The gameplay is going to be a fairly definitive factor in whether or not you enjoy it. And the actual maps that you're able to explore. The maps in this game are some of the most poorly designed things I've ever seen in my life of gaming. It is like like one of the maps that I went through. So I th I'm pretty sure I'm just not going to play it anymore. I'm going to have to. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like if I have nothing else to play, which right now is looking like that'll never happen again, <laughs> uh, then I might sit down and play it some more. But like this most recent map that I went through felt like somebody grabbed a piece of graph paper closed their eyes, picked up a pen, and just mashed on that graph paper. And wherever a mash landed, that's where a room was. So it was just like there was no cohesive purpose to it. There was nothing good about it. It just felt like I was trying to get through this weirdly designed maze that wasn't supposed to be a maze, but it was just this big bundle clusterfuck of what. <laughs> and so after that, I was just like, okay, done with this. This is not fun to explore the battles and the battle system and the mech customization were one of those things where you can look at it and be like this has a lot of potential this has a lot of promise they did not put in enough work to reach said potential um and so and I'm, i don't want to delve too deeply into it because i'm sure you can find many reviews out there if you are interested in any way shape or form that will be have uh be far more focused and less just off the cuff than I am being right now that will detail these problems at length but uh yeah so thankfully that is a game that I can set aside and will not be taking up any of my time Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel I always get those mixed up sometimes I say Legends of Trails but I got it right that time Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2 the Legend of Heroes series there's I think like eight games in the no I think there's only two so there's three different like main arcs within the Trails of Heroes. Um, God, see, just did it. Trails of Heroes, the Legend of Heroes series right now. One that takes place. I actually don't know what the hell the place that the Trails of uh, in the Sky want. But there's the Trails in the Sky, which takes place somewhere. Trails of Cold Steel, which takes place in a location called Erebonia. And then another one that I don't actually know the subtitle for because they have not been localized yet. They're Japan only at the. Well, actually, I shouldn't say they're Japan only. I think China actually has a PC version as well. But they take place in a region called Crossbell. They all occur at the same time. Like, there's all a bunch of intermingling of story elements, and some characters kind of go between all the different locations. So it's all happening at the same time. You just see it from a different perspective of a different country in this region. And every single one of them is just enormous in scope, massive. I think the original Trails of Cold Steel uh, took me around 80 hours to beat the first time through. And as far as I'm aware, Trails of Cold Steel 2 will require about the same investment in time. Apparently the ones that take place in Crossbell... Ooh, excuse me. The ones that take place in Crossbell are even larger in scope. Like, they're so massive that Xseed has said, like... We don't know if we even have, like, the capability to... Or not the capability to do this, but... 
whether or not it's worth it because they are such huge games that the amount of effort required, the amount of time it would take is so massive that we're not sure yet. So they're probably just kind of testing the waters, hoping to build an audience with the Trails of Cold Steel games, which I think they're doing because each, you know, Trails in, uh, in the Sky kind of got a decent amount of attention, uh, largely thanks to the fact that the second version, which is called SC, uh, had so much drama surrounding the localization because it was such a huge, I think it said it had something like 4 million uh, characters in it, which is even larger than like the biggest books that you can think of. Shit like War and Peace, which is something like 1,200 pages long. It's like huge, massive game, tons of dialogue, tons of stuff involved with it. And it took, it basically, they had to hire outside help and that outside help had all kinds of drama on its own. But they are huge in scope. I love them to death, but they definitely require a lot of time to sit down and truly, and I really want to, because already within the early, I mean, so the big problem, like I mentioned with JRPGs, they're fairly set in their ways. And so there are definitely fairly consistent storytelling cliches within them. And most of them I don't like. Like the over-dramatization of certain moments. It always, it just feels too cheesy to the point where I don't like, like there's, you know, the kind of good cheese and the kind of bad cheese. And being too over dramatic is bad to me. And there's a lot of that throughout the series, but there's also some very, very touching moments, some very sad moments. Like, there's some legitimate emotional heartstring tugging uh, within this game so far, and I'm very impressed by that because I'm not the kind of person that generally gets emotional like, like i'm not you know sitting here bawling my eyes out like oh my god that's so beautiful i love this but it's that thing where it kind of gets you where you're like damn man that is some nice shit that i'm seeing right now that's a really cool moment i dig it um and you know it's very again it's very rare to see something that kind of gets me emotionally invested and not just like this is really cool i'm really enjoying myself right now and instead i'm just kind of like i want to help these people <laughs> you know it, it's uh a very rare game that can get me to do that in Trails of Cold. Like I said, it kind of has its moments where sometimes I'm on the other side of it where I'm just like, man, fuck these idiots. Why? 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 Who wrote this dialogue? Who localized this dialogue? This is terrible. And then it's immediately followed by like, let me help them. I will lead you to victory, comrades. <laughs> it's really, it's a roller coaster. But I greatly enjoy the game. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, which I have not gotten my hands on yet. Um, the aforementioned Dragon Quest 7 I'm going to get into Dragon I want to talk about Dragon Quest not really at length but a decent amount more than I'm going to talk about anything else I'm missing something there's something else in there oh uh, I don't know if any of you guys have played the Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor games there's two of them and then each of those two games also has an expanded remake so the original two games came out on the Nintendo DS and then they made a remake of each of them on the 3DS which featured like kind of an epilogue addition to it uh, which is actually fairly large. It was very much worth purchasing the first one, but I never... I loved the first one. I liked the second one, and so I was kind of... I didn't really pay attention to the remake of the second one, but then I just recently ran across it because I purchased Apocalypse, and it was in the suggested item. So I was like, oh, sure, let's check this out. Let's see how much it costs. And, I mean, it was low enough, and I was like, fuck it, why not? So I have that coming in, but that's not really a priority in and of itself, but that's still a large game. Um, and I think that's more or less it, but that's like five different JRPGs, probably all 30 plus hours in length, if not more. Like Dragon Quest 7 is, so that's actually one of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, so a brief history of Dragon Quest for me personally. As a child, I had a Sega Genesis, but I never really got anything, like any big games. You know, I had some of the classic beat em ups like Golden Axe and Streets of Rage, and of course I had Sonic the Hedgehog, some of the old Disney platformers like Lion King and Aladdin. I had stuff like that, but I never had any of the RPGs, so you have things like Fantasy Star, uh, Shining Force, some of those that kind of really gained notoriety on the Sega systems, but I never had them personally, and I actually, I still need to play Shining Force. I think I have it on Steam, or I have it somewhere, I don't know. Um, nonetheless, where was I going with that? So, but I really started delving into more genres of games through the Game Boy Color. And one of those games was, at the time, Dragon Warrior 3. That's what they localized it as instead of Dragon Quest. And I loved that game. It was amazing. You start out, you have your main hero, and there are no set characters other than your main hero who have to join your party. You just go to a tavern in town and you hire 
mercenaries, and they can be one of a few chunk of classes. I think there was warrior, fighter, mage, cleric, and jester. I might be missing one in there, but I don't think I am. There's a later class that you can unlock uh, further on in the game called the sage, but I th which is kind of more or less a mixture of mage and cleric. Um, but I think, I believe those are the default five classes. I don't think there's another one on top of that, but I kind of feel like I might be missing one. Nonetheless, that was a huge game of my childhood. Adored it to death, probably, if besides Pokemon, my most played game when I was a kid. And so obviously when I start seeing these remakes of Dragon Quest games coming out in the uh, in the West for the Nintendo DS, you had the Dragon Quest 4, 5, and 6, now you have 7 and 8. Uh, 8 is not out yet, 7 just came out, 4, 5, and 6 have been out for ages now. Dragon Quest 5 is... So I'm the kind of person where if you ask me, Man, what's your favorite whatever of all time? I don't have an answer for you. I do not have a favorite book. I don't have a favorite movie. Don't have a favorite video game. I have games that are my favorite, but I cannot make a listing of them. Of like, a, I can't make a top five list of my favorite games of all time. It's impossible for me because I can't compare them in my head. It's like, how do you compare a game like Mass Effect to a game like Ninja Gaiden to a game like Dragon Quest to a game like Radiant Historia? Those are just... They're different entities altogether. How do you rank them specifically in terms of like I loved them? That's really all there is to it. And so I'm the kind I, I can't rank them like that. But I would be hard pressed if I had to sit down and make a list of top five games. It would be difficult for me to leave Dragon Quest V off of that. One of my favorite games of all time. So because of that, obviously I'm willing to give any Dragon Quest game uh, my full attention and give it a chance. So. Now, again, the aforementioned Dragon Warrior 3. I mentioned the class system for a specific reason. One of the selling points of Dragon Quest 7 is that it has that class system. It was the first game since Dragon Warrior 3 to feature that class system. So I was like, oh, hell yes. Return to form. Dragon Warrior 9. I'm Dragon Warrior. Dragon Quest 9 also had it, but I did not like that game because it felt... I think that was the first time that it featured a multiplayer component, and I it felt like it was more geared toward make, taking advantage of the multiplayer and I was just not interested in it and it, so it kind of felt a little bit more almost like an MMO a little bit and I hate that kind of game design that style uh, in general kind of like the quests involved and everything involved I just, I'm not a fan of it so I wasn't a fan of Dragon Quest 9 but so I see Dragon Quest 7 the class system is back oh hell yes get me in that ass and so I started up I, I'm not going to talk about any spoilers obviously just in case you care about it um, so I boot it up, I start it up, I start playing, you get the hero, you move on, you're going about your adventure. Hmm. Alright, well I don't get to, there's nothing indicating a class system yet. Alright, well whatever, you know, maybe it's after you kind of get moving along in a story, you get to the real, by the way, it took me an hour and a half of gameplay to get to the first goddamn battle. Just to get one battle. That was some sweet code in three, or sweet code in five. Sweet code, that was some sweet code in five shit. Where I think that game, took, aside from like one story-based duel, which wasn't really... If you're not familiar with the Sweet Code in games, there's generally three forms of conflict in those games. You have one-on-one -on -one duels, which is kind of which is basically a rock-paper-scissors element. Uh, traditional turn-based battles. And then you have like war strategy fight kind of things. And so aside from like that one duel that takes place, I think it took a good like five hours for me to actually get into a fight. That was ridiculous. It was one of the craziest openings I've ever experienced in my life. I hated it. Thank God I stuck with it because it became one of my... It got me into the Sweet Coden series after that. I was never... If I had not done that, I would never have played Sweet Coden 1 or 2, which are amazing games. Sweet Coden 3 is pretty solid. Sweet Coden 4 is the worst game ever. Let's not even get into it. Dragon Quest 7. <laughs> An hour and a half to get into the first fight. So I'm kind of sitting here. And you know, you always have that in the back of your head. After the first, like, 15 minutes, you're kind of sitting there like, I haven't seen a single monster. When does the action start? Like, when do I stop reading text boxes? And when does shit get kicked into gear? Um, and so, like I said, after an hour and a half, shit finally got kicked into gear. And the first character you see after you start getting those fights is a traditional kind of warrior character. And so I'm like, shit, yes, they're showing off the classes. That must mean I'm getting close. So you go to the first town after that. Oh shit, there's a fighter. This must mean I'm about to unlock classes. I'm so excited. Let's go. And so I go through that entire story arc. Nothing. No classes. No additional character 
showing up and like joining my party nothing so I'm like okay well maybe soon and so the game goes on continues hours hours later I'm at like hour 7 at this point no sign of classes anywhere okay fuck this I need to look this up did I miss it somewhere am I stupid what is happening here and so I look it up and I see a bunch of people being like oh yeah on average it takes people around 20 hours of gameplay to unlock the class system and that just immediately was like a wall placed in front of me that I didn't care to bypass like this is a main selling point of your game this is an amazing system I could not wait to get my hands on 20 hours needed to get to this main basic component of the game that is one of my most hated aspects of JRPGs. They have no idea how to pace the gameplay. No clue. You unlock stuff so slowly. This happened in my Tales of Vesperia playthrough where like, so I adored that game. I, that is my favorite Tales of game by far. No comparison, no uh, competition there whatsoever. My favorite Tales of game. And so I went back and I played through it again. And the entire time in the back of my head I was sitting there being like, I do not remember getting like skills and unlocking stuff this slowly my first time through i wish i had played a new game plus so i had had all this stuff unlocked to begin with and i'm starting to notice it more and more with jrpgs where they just introduce gameplay mechanics and things that uh enhance the depth of their battle system and make it kind of worth playing so incredibly slowly and it's the worst that i've ever seen in dragon quest 7 I have never seen it this bad before where I'm like I think I got to about 12 hours before I finally kind of came to the realization of like I'm not really making any real progress here every single battle has been the exact same formula for this entire time I have made no switches I've gotten like three dip three weapons in this time for each character I haven't been you know like noticing a solid increase in the rarity of equipment or in the like coolness factor of new equipment I almost never change equipment all I'm doing is basically getting stuff that I have already gotten like five hours ago like I bought a copper sword within the first two hours of the game ten hours in I'm finding copper swords in chests and dungeons like what like where is the traditional kind of you know getting new equipment to power up your character and you know make it worth exploring this area non-existent very few spells available I'm getting like a spell every five levels and so every single battle has come down to this if it's a random encounter I just click on fight all across the board which is incredibly entertaining if it's a boss fight I click on fight for the first character the second character casts a spell called Sap, which reduces the enemy's HP, or not HP, it decreases the opponent's uh, defense. The third character uses an ability called Focus Strength, which doubles the uh, damage of his next attack. And then I do an attack the next turn, and I just alternate between that. And the third character I just press fight with, or the fourth character I just press fight with. That's it. That's every single fight. No deviation whatsoever. For 12 plus hours of gameplay. How can any designer look at that and be like, yep, people are going to love this. It's ridiculous. I hate it so much. And so I'm looking up like, how long do people consider this game to be? Like, oh, 80 plus hours. Easy. And I'm just sitting here like, is this worth... Like, there's no challenge. And it would be okay if there was challenge to it, right? Like, maybe in those battles, sure, I have that formula set up. But maybe I gotta play defensively sometime. Maybe I gotta have some characters defend every once in a while. Maybe I gotta heal every once in a while. Mm -mm. <laughs> never. That's all I do is what I just said. There's never any healing. My characters are never in any danger whatsoever. There is no risk inherent in any of these fights. There's no challenge to it. So like, why am I playing this game? I have to question that. And so it's a really made me sad. It's just that entire thing. I was so excited for the return of the class system. And then to see that, number one, I can't even get it for the first 15 to 20 hours of gameplay to begin with is absurd. And then to understand that, like, even after I get it, not much will change. And about the actual battles and the challenge and whatnot, and it's just kind of like, alright, well... Because it, it sucks as I'm really interested in the concept of the story. I really, like, again, I don't want to do any talk about any spoilers, and it was kind of a really cool, like, oh... That's an awesome thing that's happening once you kind of realize what's actually going on. And so I wouldn't want to spoil that for anybody. 
but the base concept of the storyline is really interesting to me. I really dig it, and it absolutely sucks that the gameplay behind it cannot facilitate that interest and make me want to continue to pursue it to its completion. And that's really all I have to say. Like, the same thing actually happened to me with Dragon Quest VIII. Like, that is a lot of people's favorite Dragon Quest, but it felt like it just dragged on like I wasn't really getting anywhere, my characters weren't really learning anything new, and I wasn't really getting anything different with the gameplay, and that's mitigated somewhat, you know, like I mentioned, I mean, Dragon Warrior 3 could very well be the exact same thing, it's just I didn't have the same outlook toward games, I didn't have the same insight toward game design that I do now when I was a kid, and so obviously, you know, when you're a kid, you like things that are absolutely terrible, and that's why, you know, you have this quote-unquote I ruined my childhood by revisiting things I loved. There are plenty of games that I have played as a kid that I loved to death that I have had a chance to look back at and, you know, maybe play it or maybe just look at it again and be like, God damn, that was a shitty game. How did I ever enjoy that? You know, and so it may very well be that that's the case. But Dragon Quest V, I still love that game. I could pop that into my 3DS right now and play through it and love it the entire time and I think a large part of that is because I mentioned how there's really no deviation from the plan in Dragon Quest 7 in Dragon Quest 5 you have a monster capture system and I shouldn't really say monster capture kind of more monster recruitment it's entirely RNG based there's no there's you have no control over it whatsoever it's just the last monster you beat or I should say the last recruitable monster you beat because you can't recruit every single monster in the game there's an RNG chance that they may join uh, your your party. And so you're constantly moving different monsters out of your party. You're constantly getting new ones that have different gameplay elements to them. And so you have that. And you also have, in my opinion, the best storyline in Dragon Quest period guiding you along on top of that. So that helps a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't really mean to go in that, to that level of detail with Dragon Quest. But suffice to say... I was super hyped for Dragon Quest 7 and the return of the class system and to not even be able to have it happen before I lose interest in the game is a massive bummer. That is, That just made me sad. That's probably my biggest gaming disappointment so far in a very long time. Um, but yeah, so, further story time. Not to do with any of those games or anything about it. King of Fighters 14, you may have noticed there is a dearth of content coming from me. It's a really weird scenario. I don't understand what is happening, why it is happening. Every single time I have... So, my experience so far with King of Fighters has been a net positive. There have been a lot of things that don't sit well with me, specifically about the gameplay. I don't want to get into them right now because I still want to kind of mull them over, get my thoughts solidified about them, and ensure that I'm not missing something blatantly obvious that just completely wipes away all of my thoughts and is like, no, you're just fucking stupid and you don't understand how this is supposed to work. But, so, just to kind of summarize it so you can kind of know where I'm coming from, I don't feel like defense, good defense is rewarded in that game at all. That's basically, like, I have a bunch of points of why that is, but like I said, I want to mull them over, I want to test them more thoroughly and see whether or not it's just me fucking up or if that's just how the game is designed in general. But that's where it all stems from, is like, I don't feel like defense is rewarded in any way shape or form it's basically just like all that you want to do so it's basically like it's like marvel have you ever felt like if you've played marvel before blocking well got you something good i mean obviously you didn't get hit you didn't take damage that's good but did it ever give you the advantage no never not in high level play there's a reason why push block exists, so you can stop defending reset scenario back in neutral, and now you go back with offense against offense. That's kind of how it feels like in King of Fighters, except there's no push block. There kind of is, there's you know the metered uh, blowback that you can do when you're in block stun, that kind of thing, but obviously that takes meter, that's not something you can just do. Um, so that's kind of you know where I'm coming from right now, is I just I don't feel like good defense, blocking things properly, or kind of trying to play patiently works well in that game and it's really it's getting on my nerves quite a bit but like i said i need to mull it over more but that's just where it's kind of stemming from at the moment but aside from that my overall experience with king of fighters has been a positive one online obviously pre-patch was absolutely awful not even worth playing post-patch has been very smooth in general but for some reason every single time i sit down to record 
everything goes to shit. I stop being able to join rooms. I get this message that says, could not acquire room information consistently to a much higher degree than when I'm not recording, which makes no sense because it's not like the PS4 or the game itself can be like, oh, this person is using a game capture. I'm going to fuck the experience for them. It just, such is luck, right? Murphy's Law rears up and bodies me. Just how it is. Connections are consistently worse. Again, there's no reason for it. This capture card, the capture... Um, program that I use, none of them require an internet connection, none of them utilize internet resources, thus there's no reason for it to be any worse than normal, except again consistently, for some reason I have much worse connections when I'm recording than when I'm not, and so I have recorded, like I think I've tried to record four different videos of online play at this time, and every single one has just sucked and so, let me describe to you the very first one now this was by far the worst one for a variety of reasons which I will obviously get into as I talk about it but every single one has been kinda of similar so I sit down I introduce everything I get into a match starting out four bars awesome we're looking strong right out the gate pick our teams move past the loading screen the second the loading screen is over it starts to stutter it gets to the character introduction part and it is moving at maybe if I'm being generous a fifth of the normal speed of the game okay then that's our opening match uh i'm not playing this i don't have anything to talk about i'm not going to make you experience this i am going to edit this match out once it gets over with we're done once i get into another match we'll jump straight to that and everything will be good to go so i let that match go through i get into another match this time it's two bars all right well now it's kind of at the coin flip territory. I've had good two bar connections. I've had bad two bar connections. Let's see which one this one is. It was definitely better. It was playable, but it still wasn't great. And so the kind of thought entered my head of like, I'm already editing out this one match. Let's get rid of this one too. And let's start with a really solid good match. I want this, I want this to start out right. So don't talk at all during it. I just play it. I get out of that lobby. Maybe something's wrong with the lobby. I don't fucking know. I look for a match elsewhere. Party versus single versus. Can't find anything. So I'm like, alright, fuck it. I'm going to join ranked. I'm going to just play a ranked game. Now, my experience in ranked has been a net negative. I have never played a single person. Like, the quality level of the players in ranked is exponentially worse than the people that are playing in the free match section right now. Like, I have never played what I would term a good player and that isn't to try and like play myself up right like man i'm so good can't nobody hang with me i am very honest to myself about my capabilities i suck at king of fighters right now i have not had enough experience to solidify my fundamentals that are necessary in that game being able to short hop you know use the hops and jumps and whatnot perfectly knowing when to roll when to uh kind of just sit back that kind of thing i don't have that experience yet, and i have no matchup knowledge so all of that kind of culminates in me being a fairly bad player but these are the kind of people that you watch them play and you just kind of wonder like how did this person ever get into fighting games where like they're not trying things and fucking up they're not just inexperienced they are just they make no sense there's no thought process behind what they're doing they sit there and they literally mash on crouching light kick but they don't uh, they don't confirm it in anything when it actually hits. They just mash on light punch and hope for an auto combo to go through with them. They run away all day and they throw fireballs and they don't do anything off of them. They don't set up traps through them. They don't have any actual spacing behind them. They just spam mindlessly. So like, how do these people expect to actually build on top of what they're doing? That kind of thing. Um, and so this person that I ran into and ranked was the last one that I mentioned. They did not do anything except run away from me as fast as they possibly could, get to full screen, and start throwing projectiles. They had three projectile characters, and that's all they did. So, even though the, connect the connection was smooth as hell, as good of a connection as you can expect in this game, that was what the gameplay was. And so I'm just like, okay, this is not a match. I'm already editing out these other two matches. This is stupid. This is a free win for me. This is not fun to watch. So fuck it. We're getting rid of this match too. <laughs> like, and we're starting this out well. So that's three matches gone. And also like five minutes in between searching for matches. 
So then I hit up single versus again. I find a lobby, I play against somebody, connection is good, they're about on the same level as me, which is where, like I mentioned, inexperienced, but they clearly know some things, they're trying to put them into practice, they just don't have the actual experience that they haven't solidified, muscle memory, reactions, all that good stuff, but they, they're they trying. And so I figure, alright, cool, we're about on even footing, this is a good connection, this is the perfect kind of match to enjoy. So, first match. Smooth, no problems, everything's good, rematch, cool, end of the first round, the game freezes. The console doesn't freeze, the game itself actually did not freeze, just the match froze, like, the background, you could still hear the background sounds, the stage music was still playing, I could still access the in-game menu, all that stuff, it was just the match itself was frozen, would not go anywhere. So f we sat there for a good, like, probably 45 seconds to a minute before I was like, alright, fuck it, I'm dashboarding out. This is like this video is unusable. This is stupid. This is probably one of the worst attempts at making a video I've ever had. I'm done with it. But maybe I can salvage something. Maybe I can just post up this little funny haha -ha, look at the game freezing kind of moment. So I boot up the video to uh, get a timestamp of when that happened so I can come back later and edit it. And there is persistent static feedback from my microphone throughout the entire video drowning out everything else all you can really hear is you can very rarely hear the game if like it's a character doing a move where they shout particularly loud you can barely hear me but mostly it's just static noise and so it's like okay I'm, I'm kind of okay with this being the shittiest video ever because at least it was ruined from the start there was nothing like nothing good was going to come from this from the get-go thanks to this weird microphone issue i fixed the microphone obviously given that you're listening to this but um yeah it was just i think that might be like the worst video i've ever recorded and so that set the stage i guess because every single time i've tried to record since then again connections have been almost always shit or like it's just, I don't know man I can't really explain it it's just been an overall every single time I sit down and play generally fine like I mean like I mentioned I still suck at the game I haven't really improved because I haven't put in consistent time with it so it's like I learn something but then I take enough of a break doing other things in between that I forget everything that I learned in between and now I'm just back to stage one where I just plain suck again um, <laughs> and so I'm still not in a place where I'm comfortable in my own performance and there are a lot of people who are, you know, just kind of at the same stage. They're just not very good right now. They need a lot of work to get better. And, you know, it's hard to find time to do that kind of stuff, especially for a fighting game. It's difficult to get good at fighting games. They have one of the highest uh, kind of base skill requirements to do well in them than any genre of gaming, period. And so that's just kind of how it is. It's how the cookie crumbles. But yeah, it's just even then, despite my performance, it's just whenever I sit down to try and capture, the online experience just becomes one of the worst ones I've ever seen in my life. But when I'm not recording, everything's fine and smooth, and it's just like, should I just stop trying to capture and just use the whole save this video feature that the PlayStation 4, like the PS4 share thing has, and just record the matches or like later with commentary after the fact? like? what can I do about this because clearly trying to record them normally is not working for a dude so <laughs> it's just so strange because this is so different for me I've never had this problem before where like I sit down to record and everything just sucks literally everything it's just such a strange experience so hopefully that fixes itself eventually like I don't fucking know man I don't know what I'm doing I don't know what's going on I do know however that it is making me a very sad individual so that's why there hasn't been much king of fighters is just because every video i record has just sucked and it's not worth posting so yeah hopefully that fixes itself eventually or i do have a surprise coming i'm gonna do you know clickbait right now you'll never guess what happens next you really won't i really don't think anybody could possibly see this coming but i'm gonna drop it on y'all anyway it's gonna be a surprise i hope and maybe that'll fix things. I mean, it depends. You know, there's a whole bunch of factors that could come into play that are unexpected. But nonetheless, I got some shit in the works. We'll see. I actually thought it was going to happen on Saturday. I got a package that I thought was what was happening. I got super excited. I was like, oh, hell yeah, let's get right into this. Let's immediately start recording. And it wasn't what I thought it was. It made me sad. <laughs> so anyway... 
Thank you for listening as usual, and I will talk to you all next time.